To begin our discussion on the greenhouse effect, let's look through what the heck do we mean by this. We're talking about solar rays coming in, warming up the planet, and how the temperature is interacting with our atmosphere, creating this greenhouse effect. So let's go ahead and start this animation. So you'll have sunlight reaching the Earth. Some of that energy is going to reflect, bounce off the Earth, be radiated away. Some of it is absorbed by the atmosphere. Now those greenhouse gases, what they do is radiate those that re-emit, that recaptured energy in a random direction. So I'll let this loop through one more time. The energy comes in, it can bounce off, Earth is trying to thermal equalize, and our greenhouse gases in the atmosphere can absorb that and radiate that thermal energy back in a random direction. And this leads to a net overall heating of the atmosphere. Calling back to slides that we discussed in previous section, where planets, all objects, are trying to reach this state of thermal equilibrium. The amount of energy coming in from solar energy wants to be equal to the amount of energy that we're radiating away. The, the faucet analogy, the water level stays constant. The amount out, the thermal energy, and the amount in, the solar energy, keeps the water level constant. All objects are trying to achieve this thermal equilibrium. And when we're in the greenhouse effects, what's happening is that solar energy is coming in, some of it's getting trapped, and so the planet has to heat up in order to emit thermal energies faster. The solar energy gets absorbed into our atmosphere, and the planet must get warmer to get that level to reach a more stable level. One last diagram that has all the same information, the solar rays coming in and the greenhouse gases trapping that energy. So by greenhouse molecules, the most predominant in our atmosphere is carbon dioxide, CO2, and water vapor. Water vapor actually is a significant aspect of these uh, greenhouse molecules. And what they're really doing is blocking infrared radiation. And that's how the energy is coming back here, trapped in the atmosphere, heating the planet. So one thing that we want to make clear here is that without the greenhouse effect, Earth would be a frozen tundra. Because of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, Earth's surface is about 35 Kelvin warmer. That is warm enough that our oceans don't freeze over. So one thing that I wanted to spell here is that the greenhouse effect is a bad thing. No, this is not a comment about good or bad. We're just talking about physics, astronomy here. And without a certain amount, a level of greenhouse gases, CO2 and water, H2O, Earth would freeze. So we need greenhouse gases to keep the planet warm enough for us to be hospitable, for this planet to be hospitable for us. Now, if you up the number of greenhouse gases, increase the amount of CO2, increase the amount of water, CH4s in that atmosphere, you can have what's called a runaway effect, where look at Venus. Venus is 400 Kelvin warmer in its atmosphere because of the amount of greenhouse molecules in its atmosphere. Now comparing the atmospheres of Mars or Venus, remember those were predominantly CO2 atmospheres. But Mars isn't a you know, boiling surface. And that just comes down to that Mars atmosphere is way less de dense than Venus. So while, yes, the bulk of Martian atmosphere is a greenhouse gas, there's just not enough there for a greenhouse effect. Now we go to Venus. This is a completely different picture. Remember, Venus has the most volcanoes in the solar system and a very thick atmosphere. Its escape velocity is about on par with Earth, just a little bit smaller. Earth's escape velocity is closer to 11 kilometers a second. And so these combination of factors leads to the temperatures on Venus in that atmosphere being 400 Kelvin higher than if that gas was not there. So the surface of Venus in that atmosphere is this boiling wasteland almost because of the sheer amount of greenhouse gases. And one thing to emphasize here is that our understanding of the runaway greenhouse effect, our understanding of a 
future subject in a later video, climate change. All it comes from studying Venus, understanding what's going on in the atmosphere of Venus. Now, coming back to Earth, remember, the terrestrial planets all formed from the same amount of material, so we would expect the same types of atmospheres, at least similar, but we've already established how Earth doesn't have as much CO2 as Venus or Mars, and those primary reasons are due to the liquid water and life on this planet. This ties into the carbon cycle, how life and water is processing. What life can do is take carbon dioxide and put it into the soil, put it into the ground. Water, through its complex chains, can actually take CO2 and compress it into limestone. So the combination of the large oceans and life forming on this planet was able to reduce the amount of CO2, eventually flood this planet with a lot of oxygen in its atmosphere. Venus didn't have those things. It didn't have as much water. Venus was too hot to sustain any kind of uh, life or water on its surface. And so the emphasis here is that the combination of H2O and CO2 on Earth contained the amount of carbon, the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere, and reduced the runaway greenhouse effects on planet Earth.